This video will give the viewer an overview of using the EEPT version 2.10 to document the environmental evaluation, or NRCS, CPA 52, in an example planning situation. First, a little background. Users of Windows 10 had problems using the EEPT version 2.001, probably due to extra RAM required to run Excel 2016. This version, EEPT version 2.10, removes most of the macros. Instead of using macros, land uses are selected with an auto filter on the CPA 52 tab. The benchmark selection tab has been removed. The benchmark narratives are on a separate tab and are easily editable. The file size was reduced from 3.7 megabytes to 1.6 megabytes and computer RAM requirements are decreased. Additionally, the user can actually enter all the information from the CPA 52 tab without having to go to separate tabs. Let's first look at the changes in the EEPT version 2.10. The EEPT opens on the CPA 52 tab. The form appears as usual with a couple of changes. There are two additional columns, A and B. These columns contain the land use associated with each resource concern and whether or not the resource is required to be evaluated for each land use. The spreadsheet is not locked. However, these columns should not be edited. If the user inadvertently edits the data in the columns, they can use the Clear Form button to clear the form and reset the data to the default. If their user does not want to clear the entire spreadsheet, they can use the Update Filter button on the upper right side of the screen to reset columns A and B to their default values without clearing the entire spreadsheet. The A and B columns will not print on the final CPA 52. The benchmark selection tab has been removed and the narratives for the benchmark conditions have been moved to the benchmark narratives tab. The benchmark narratives are easily editable on this tab as desired by states. The user does not have to switch back and forth from the benchmark selections and the CPA 52 tab since all the selections are made on the CPA 52 tab. This feature should save the user time in documenting the benchmark conditions since everything is already on the CPA 52. The user will also enter the client, plan, and farm information as well as the client's objectives and needs for action directly on the form instead of with a dialog box. To select the applicable land uses, the user should click the drop down button in cell A21. By default, all items are checked. The Select All button selects all the items if checked and unselects all the items if unchecked. The user should uncheck land uses and modifiers that are not included in their plan, but they must always check the All Resource Headers item to display the headers such as soil erosion, soil condition, water quality, and etc. The user should select the Graze, Irrigated, and Wildlife modifiers if applicable in addition to the land uses in the plan. Notice that column B has the status of the resource concern. If the cell is red, it is required but not documented. The benchmark narrative cell has a drop down button that gives the user possible choices. So if the user clicks the cell, then clicks the drop down button adjacent to the cell, the lookup narratives from the benchmark narrative tabs appear as choices. If the user clicks on one of the choices, the narrative is populated in the benchmark cell for the resource concern. Note that the user can edit the narrative by double-clicking the narrative or they may simply enter their own narrative 
by typing the information into the cell. Notice that the red color in column B is removed to signify the benchmark has been documented and the status changes. Also notice that the name of the concern is color coded to signify green is not a concern and if a concern is present the cell will remain colored in red. There is also a filter in column B so that the user can filter by the status of the resource concerns. We will look at that more later. Let's look at the environmental evaluation as part of the planning process, beginning with the first steps, identifying the problems and determining the objectives. I will now demonstrate the EEPT version 210 in a conservation planning situation. Here is the scenario we will use. A producer, John A. Smith, comes into your office and wants some help. He operates a farm with some cropland, about 260 acres, in a soybean and corn rotation. He mentions that his yields on the cropland have been dropping and he uses a conventional tillage system. He wants to continue producing crops but would be open to making some changes to improve yields. He is also concerned about how the streams on his farm are becoming increasingly muddy. Since we have gotten that information, we have already started the planning process and have some information for steps one and two, identify problems and determine objectives. The planner should use the environmental evaluation process throughout the planning process, so let's get started on the environmental evaluation. We must first click the Enable Content button to enable the macros in the spreadsheet. We enter the client's name, the conservation plan identifier, the applicable program, and the tract and field information. We describe the client's objective and the need for action. We need to identify the land uses on the farm, so we click the drop down button to select the land uses. We uncheck the Select All box to remove all land uses. Then we check All Resource Headers to display the headers. Note that if we don't check this item, the headers, such as soil erosion, will not display on the form. And for this plan, we check Cropland and Farmstead, since those are the two land uses on this farm. Then we click OK. Now only resource concerns that apply to cropland and farmstead are displayed on the form. If we scroll down, we see that some concerns are required and some are optional. The required concerns are highlighted in red in column B to signify that they are not documented and the optional concerns are highlighted in yellow to signify that they are not documented. At this point, it is probably a good time to save the form since we need to go to the field for resource inventories. Note that this version of the EEPT will open up to the same view on the screen as it was when it was saved. In planning steps three and four, we inventory the resources and analyze that resource data. From this information, we should be able to identify resource concerns and document the benchmark conditions on the farm. In these steps, we go to the field and inventory the resources. Planners use different methods, but in our case, we will use a resource concern checklist to document the resources. The checklist uses a series of screening questions and depending on the answers to those questions, we may need to run assessment tools such as Russell 2 or the integrated erosion tool to fully assess the resource and determine if there is a concern present. Let's review our resource concern checklist. In some cases, we were able to screen out concerns, but in other cases, we had to use an assessment tool to identify if the concern was present. For the cropland, the screening question for the cropland sheet and rill and wind erosion is false, 
so we used IET to do the assessment. The assessment question for sheet and rill erosion, water erosion rate less than or equal to T, is false and the concern is present. We check the false box and the resource concern box and document the fields where the concern occurs and document the rates for the individual fields. The assessment question for wind erosion, wind erosion rate less than or equal to T, is true and the concern is not present. We check the true box and document the rates for the individual fields. So for steps three and four, we have conducted resource inventories and have used assessment tools to evaluate that resource data. Let's look at how we would document that on the EEPT. We open the EEPT. Since some narratives don't fully display in the choice list box, the planner can expand the column so that more of the narratives is visible. So click the expand column button. The column is expanded. The planner must reduce the column width with the button prior to printing or some of the columns will be too small on the printout. We click the drop down button in the soil erosion, sheet, reel, and wind erosion cell for the cropland and select the narrative. The resource concern checklist can help with the documentation of the benchmark condition. For example, in this situation, the screening question was false, so we used IET to do the assessment. For the wind erosion, the assessment question was true and was not a concern. However, for water erosion, the assessment question was false and fields 1, 2, and 3 had a concern. So the last narrative best fits the benchmark condition. Since there are blanks in the narrative, they must be filled in. The user can either double click in the cell or click in the formula bar and edit the narrative. The description of the benchmark condition is complete. Notice that the red highlight in column B has been removed to signify the benchmark condition has been documented. The planner can use this function to identify required resource concerns that do not have the benchmark condition documented. Also notice that the sheet, reel, and wind erosion header also remains red because the resource concern is present. If we move to the sheet, reel, and wind erosion cell for the farmstead and click the drop down and once again review our resource concern checklist. For the farmstead, the screening question was true, so the concern is not present and the first narrative best describes the benchmark condition. Once again, the red highlight disappears from column B to signify the benchmark condition is documented. The sheet, reel, and wind erosion header changes to a green color to signify that the resource concern is not present. Let's look at some of the optional concerns. Even though compaction on the cropland is an optional concern, there was some compaction occurring when we inventoried the resources, so we need to document the concern. The yellow highlight in column B is removed to signify the benchmark is documented and the status in column B changes. The heading for the compaction on the cropland remains highlighted in red since the concern is present. For the organic matter depletion concern on the cropland, from our resource inventories and assessments, the SCI was negative 0.14. We continue that process until all of the required concerns are documented and the optional concerns that are an identified resource concern are documented. There should not be any red cells in column B. After all the benchmark conditions are documented, the user should reduce the column for printing using the button. The filter in column B gives the planner some options for printing the CPA 52. In this case, we're going to not show the optional resource concerns that are not determined. 
So this option will show all of the required concerns and only the optional ones that are identified resource concerns. The filter in column B gives the planner many options for which resource concerns to display on the CPA 52. Users should abide by their state policy and guidance in selecting these options. Check with your state resource conservationist or environmental compliance officer for the recommendations in your state.